Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So today I wanted to give you a short garden tour of the spring garden. It's very early. Realize this is a working garden so there's stuff kind of everywhere and there's still weeds and edging that needs to be done. We just had our last frost so it will be a little while until I get everything sorted out. But most everything has been pruned um, and shaped up. There's just some small chores that need to be done here and there. So we'll get started around the patio area. That's the spot that's in, has the most work that needs to be done. So I designed this space last year after our patio was completed. Uh, we have a pink lemonade baptisia here and an emerald green arborvitae, a sunjoy gold pillar, storm cloud amsonia. This is a blueberry bush. Uh, I'm really excited to get blueberries on. I need to get some netting. It's just producing a ton of blueberries at this point. And this area is the area that is going to change significantly over the next couple of weeks. So we are getting a new fountain, which will go somewhere around in this area. I've got some trees and some shrubs that will go elsewhere on the property after I get those details planned out. So. This is mostly just shrubs that I haven't gotten in the ground. Uh, I need to start up my earth boxes. I've showed those to you in a previous video. Um, they're right here. It's nice because they have an auto watering feature. Hose was left on. And so there's actually a device that will go down in this tube and detect the water level and auto refill them as needed. I got all my peppers in. Uh, we got raspberries, blackberries. This is full of shrubs basically that I also either propagated or purchased and just have not found anywhere to put yet. So this lavender, in my lavender pruning video, I showed you um, lavender that started from seed, just overwintered and came up. This is some starts that I pulled up last year and just separated. So they are about ready to go out somewhere in the landscape. I gotta find a place for them. They probably need to be pruned up and trimmed. But I got all my peppers in. Most of these are bell peppers um, and then some hotter peppers here. I planted some cucumbers along this cattle panel, kale, and then some of my tomatoes down here in this line. Um, I've still got some winter sowing. I've got two take out this is hollyhocks and they are about to start coming out of the top i need to get on that i picked up these yuki cherry blossom dutsia um, the other day at the garden center i think those they stay fairly short and they'll look lovely around the fountain um, you can see those blooms there how pretty they are and if we follow around the small vegetable garden I've got ranunculus here that I'm waiting to get some blooms on. They're coming along quite nicely. It's got a lot of deal in here as well that's self-seeded that I need to pull out or move around. Uh, this is an amazel basil from Proven Winners. If you've not tried amazel, amazel basil before, it is excellent. The flavor is not supposed to change when it goes to flower. So it's a great alternative for regular basil if you can't keep on pruning it to keep the flavor from changing. So this is a hedge of boxwood around the vegetable garden. Uh, these are winter green boxwood. They're a couple, they're a little older. These are sprinters. Uh, we had a very hard freeze a couple years ago and most of these died back significantly. So I replaced them with sprinter boxwoods. And I actually have, if you can see over there around this tree, I just extended this bed. Um, and those are the old boxwoods that are here. I just potted them back up and let them recover for a year out in my sick plant bay, as I call it. So this is the south side of our house. It gets quite a lot of sun. So this is a bed that I'm frequently working on. So I've got some sedum down here. I've got quite a few hydrangeas. So this is a bobo. And then we have a Zinfandel back here, which did not bloom quite well last year. Uh, I'm hoping it does better this year because it has gorgeous red stems um, and I'm gonna see if that doesn't do well in this area because it is so hot I may have to move those elsewhere in the landscape. This is a Boscobel rose. It is just completely budded up and ready to put on blooms. It's really beautiful. 
This is my favorite part of the landscape over here right now, this Wygilla. I did put off my garden tour a week just because I wanted this to be in bloom. And you can see how gorgeous it is. It, the blooms emerge white and then they fade or darken to a very dark pink. This is Checkmark Trilogy by Proven Winners. Uh, last year I did not get blooms on this one because of our very bad frost. It killed all the buds. These do bloom on old wood. So if you prune on them, they need to be pruned on immediately after they finish blooming, else you will be cutting off buds for next year. We've got some just standard lavender here. I showed this lavender on my Instagram story. Uh, there are baby lavenders everywhere I need to remove. So if you don't prune your lavender until the spring, uh, sometimes they will set seed and then you'll have lavender coming up everywhere. These are just some salvias that I saved from a Lowe's dying rack. Another Checkmark Trilogy Wygilla. This beautiful iris. I hardly got any iris blooms last year because of the frost as well. So I'm really excited about these. They're absolutely gorgeous this year. I've got some more hydrangeas in here. This is a Pugster Amethyst. Uh, butterfly bush that has these beautiful purpley blue pink blooms on it in the summer uh, and I will show those to you later in another garden tour. We have some very large daylilies back here. Uh, this is a mini Malvet hydrangea right in front of it. Uh, I actually moved those last year and I moved them pretty um, midway through the summer and they died back quite a bit so they're not filled out as much. We have a quick fire hydrangea, which is budding up and is about ready to bloom. Some more iris and sedum. As I said, I'm trying to add in more drought tolerant plants over here because the sun just bakes this part of the bed during the summer, midsummer. Even though I have drip irrigation, it's still some of the plants aren't thriving like I would like. So I'm gonna have to work on that. Uh, firelight hydrangea in the very back here and a mini mauvette, another mini mauvette. Um, this is actually a gara that I grew from seed that's getting ready to bloom. And I believe that's a Cheyenne Skies grass from Proven Winners. An old salvia. And these are some of the newer ferns from Proven Winners. I can't remember the name off my offhand. And here we start going to what I call the Japanese maple bed. So here we have a ring of hostas kind of around the spruce. And this is a Desdemona rose, which is absolutely gorgeous. It has these beautiful white blooms on it. We've got a spider here. It is looking kind of rough. I may need to spray it with some neem to keep some of the bugs off of it. It's getting kind of eat up. This is a lemon daddy hosta that we saved from Lowe's for $5 last year. I need to come back and prune off this dead material. Um, I was waiting to see because it did look quite bad and I'm not sure if I will leave this in this location. Uh, we don't have the best luck with macrophylla hydrangeas and that is a macrophylla variety. And it may get too much sun here. This is the east side of our house and so I'm hoping it won't get too much sun but if it starts burning I may move it or just throw it away altogether if I'm not getting any blooms off it. I do need some uh, yellow foliage here, so if this one don't survive, I will probably put a lemony lace elderberry there. Here we have my Crimson Queen Japanese Maple, along with a Helen Von Stein Lamb's Ear. So this is a bigger variety of Lamb's Ear. It gets, the leaves get quite large, it's still early in the season but I love the texture of them. They're just really soft to the touch. This is a crimson sunset maple that is absolutely gorgeous. I selected this variety and planted it in the fall for this space because it's very nice uh, and it's gonna bring a lot of color to the front yard. You can see the leaves here are this gorgeous red purpley color. It'll transition a little more purple uh, as the summer progresses, but it has just brought a ton of color to the front yard. We're still got some bulbs blooming. These are alliums. I don't have the best luck with alliums up here. I've tried them before and they never come back, but we'll see if they come back this year. Uh, these are wee white hydrangeas down here and I have another one right here. And then it's surrounded by 
some flocks, a hybrid flock, flocks from Proven Winners. It's a dwarf variety, so that's about as tall as it gets, and it's about, it's budding up, getting ready to bloom. And then you've seen my lavender hedge in a video before. It's coming out nicely. Uh, I may need to prune on it a little bit. Looks like I missed a stem here. And then these are Millennium Alliums, which I really love. An Atlast Rose from Proven Winners, which isn't doing great in this location. It may be the soil. I actually picked up some more shrubs today to put around here because I believe this spruce just like sucks all the water out of this bed, even though it's on drip irrigation. And the shrubs that I have put in here do not do the best. So I had a mini bloomerang lilac down there, which died and I've got to replace. But I picked up this Midnight Wine Wygila, which has beautiful silver black foliage, and then another butterfly bush back here in Periwinkle, which is a little more drought tolerant, and I think that will work quite well here. I have this double wide Solomon seal down here that I absolutely love. It is gorgeous. I got it last year. I wasn't sure if it would make it because I planted it in the middle of the summer and it's coming along quite nicely. These are, I believe, hopscotch, hookera, and dwarf pink astilbe. We have a pearl, black pearl hookera down here. And then surrounding this magnolia, which I have mentioned in my winter garden tour, is tiny tough stuff hydrangea. And I'm trying to get them to bloom blue this year, so I added some sulfur. Last year I didn't get many blooms on them either because of our late freeze. Um, they were brand new planted last year and between transplant shock and the late freeze we had, I only got a couple blooms, but they are absolutely budded up this year. There's lots of blooms on there. This tree, as I mentioned, was completely broken in half by a freeze we had a couple years ago. You can see where I repaired it here. Uh, this entire branch had split and fallen over and I actually come in and drilled holes through it in these two locations, right here and right here, and bolted it together and it came along quite nicely. I had no die off. That was like November 3rd of 2019 um, or 2018 and I was just surprised it made it. We have mango salsa roses down here, which are finally, I just planted these this year. They're putting on a ton of buds. You saw my geraniums in my geranium planting video. We have a bloom here that needs to be pulled off, but you can see how pretty that bloom is. As we come around this way, I get a lot of comments on this fountain area here. People love it. So a couple years ago, when we put in this fountain, I went to Lowe's and bought the Irish and Scottish moss plugs, this the tiny plugs, and I alternated the pattern. It dies off a little bit in the winter around the fountain, I believe because it's so close to the concrete and it gets so cold, but it snaps right back and in another month, you won't even be able to tell that brown was there. We still have quite a number of bulbs that need to be pulled out after the foliage dies back. Uh, I moved some calendula that restarted from um, seeds that were just overwintered, uh, and I've moved it around the property. We've got some boogie woogie sedum down here that I love. I'm hoping it spreads a little more last this year. Last year it was kind of covered up by another shrub and kind of faded out a little bit, but I absolutely love it. I was able to get it a couple years ago before it was even available on the market, I found it at a Lowe's. So this is a mostly hosta bed that I started from single starts, and this is one of my favorite parts of the garden. It's still kind of early. The hostas have just emerged, and they will get quite large and absolutely beautiful. And these hostas down here, these blue varieties, actually come from Walmart in a pack. It just said blue hostas, so I'm not sure exactly what all of them are. Uh, the only problem I have in this area is early in the spring, I tend to be walking around in here quite a lot, and I step on them. And so they get damaged a little bit, or someone steps on them, so I need to come in and prune those off. I believe this variety is drinking gourd, although it came in that um, Walmart package that was unmarked. 
can see I got my Ely garden hose reel installed and I absolutely love it. It's super easy to use. If you've never heard of Ely, check them out. I've got a link below. Um, they make the absolute best water hoses and you'll see them all in my garden. So I'll be doing a video on this today, but I'm repulling up some plants right here and replacing it with this uh, Gatsby Star Hydrangea. While I'm over here, I'll show you some containers, some shade containers I put together. Uh, this is a Evergold Carex, I believe is what it's called, a Water Slide Hosta from Proven Winners, another Black Pearl Hukra, and a Japanese Maple. And we have another container I put together over here with a Hukra, Ghost Fern, and another Japanese Maple that I found on clearance at Walmart. So I wanted to show you this container. I don't have a ton of experience with annuals because my garden's fairly new. It's on its third season and I don't plant a ton of annuals. I typically go with perennials uh, just because I've been trying to fill out the space and that has been a significant outlay of resources the past few years. But now that I've got quite a lot of the garden full, I've started buying more annuals. So these are Supertunia Vista Bubblegum and a um, Salvia. Rock and Purple, I believe is the name of it. So those will get quite large and cast a down here. Uh, if you've seen my Instagram or YouTube, you will notice that I have planted Supertunia Bordeaux in the past, and those containers I actually just potted up yesterday, and I have a separate video on that, which you'll see that in. So surrounding the green spruce we have here, I've got wee white hydrangea, which stays super small, uh, maybe two feet tall by two feet wide. I did get those from Hertz Gardens as four inch containers, so they're still very, very small and they're on their second year of growth. Uh, so I've got the hydrangeas and the hostas alternating here all the way around the spruce. And I pruned those hydrangeas back quite significantly. If you saw my pruning video, um, because the growth that I had gotten on them was quite scraggly. The new growth that's coming out is quite more substantial. Before I go around the side of the house, I'm gonna take you to this front bed up here. Uh, this is basically my shade garden bed. This is the only tree we have on the property uh, that's the biggest shade tree. I've ins installed quite a number of trees. But around here we have some lungwort. I think the name of it's raspberry splash. It's just going out of bloom, but it has beautiful pink and purple flowers on it. We have a lemony lace elderberry, which is absolutely gorgeous in this area. And this is my pride and joy of the space, the Empress Wu Hosta, which is on its third season and it's being absolutely glorious. I have another Empress Wu right here that I planted quite close together. I'm actually gonna move that to under one of the spruces because it will begin to compete with this one and I want that one to be as big as possible. So this bed, the front of the bed is new as of last year. I added a hedge of Invincible Ruby Hydrangeas and sprinter boxwoods. These sprinter boxwoods were in gallon containers just last uh, August, and you can see how large they are already. I have been super impressed with their growth. They have at least doubled in size in less than six months. These hosta in the front, I'm not sure what variety of those are. These did come with a house. Um, I believe they may be Patriot or Minuteman, but they are very large and they grow very quickly and spread very quickly. So all of those hostas you see there came from one clump of hosta somewhere else in the flower bed near the house. And I removed them all and moved them down here. And I actually divided all of these in two and gave them away last year. So I did have to replace two of these Invincible Ruby this year. Uh, this one right here and that one right there. 
Uh, for some reason, they just did not survive the winter. I don't know, sometimes that happens. All the others are doing perfectly fine. So in these containers, which I will probably be removing, is Proven Winners Oh So Easy Italian Ice Roses. Uh, they clearly did not like being in there over winter. So I'm probably going to find a Hosta variety. Um, there's one called Woo La La, which is a sport of Empress Wu that gets very large. So I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and find a large potted container of those and then I will add them to both this container and then uh, that one over there as well. These are macrophylla hydrangeas and other than the lemon daddy that I showed you earlier, I do not plant macrophylla hydrangeas in my garden, mainly because they do not bloom very well. However, this variety is bloom struck by the endless summer um, variety of hydrangeas and it is supposed to be a re-blooming macrophylla. So we've got blooms coming on it, which is a good sign. Uh, I need to come in and cut off this dead. I saved these from uh, Home Depot and they were looking very bad. I brought them home and saved them and gave them some fertilizer and put them in the ground and they've recovered quite nicely. So on the north side of our house, I have this hedge of emerald green arborvitae and in front a hedge of incredible hydrangeas which you may have saw in my pruning video. Uh, we do have stand by me clematis right in front of each emerald green arborvitae um, and then a hedge of Salome double classic daylilies. Now you can buy daylilies in bulk which is what I did here uh, from a website and then I spread them out. I accidentally got sent one bundle of the wrong type and because you get daylilies when you order them online they are um, they are cut and they have no flowers on them uh, I wanted a hedge of a solid daylily and now I have in here that I've been pulling up for the past two years a random variety of daylily that just completely clashes with the rest of the others so um, they did make it right. They did send me extras and told me to either destroy or give away the others. But year after year, I've been trying to pull out the old varieties. So these incredible hydrangeas are on their third year and they're gonna be absolutely gorgeous this year. They're finally bulking up. Uh, so I'm really excited to see them. They're already putting on blooms and they will just be a big white ball. Um, and then it will turn like a limey color uh, towards the late summer. I have this stand by, by me clematis. I think there was a clump of grass growing here that I pulled up and it did not like it. So that's one I didn't think was gonna come up at all, but it did come up and so I'm gonna let that recover. I'll throw a little fertilizer on it and see if it will recover quicker. And it might look a little puny this year, but I've got all these others that are looking absolutely amazing. So I have another at last rose here that seems to be getting eaten by bugs and a clematis uh, that is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure of the clematis variety. I do have a tag down there somewhere hidden under it, but I'm not gonna pull that out right now. So in this area, this is a new bed as of last year. Uh, I just got in my David Austin roses. I put an Olivia, Olivia Austin rose here. I ordered Olivia Austin rose last year and I had a mix up by David Austin and I received a rose variety that was not Olivia Austin. And I will show you that later in the bed. It is quite beautiful, um, but I believe they stopped carrying it this year on their store. And I believe the variety is Pegasus. So this is a continuation of the Helen Von Stein lamb's ear here. And then all of these are Bobo hydrangeas. I've mentioned in a previous video as well that this uh, part of the bed was completely clay soil and I had to pull every one of these plants that I planted in this area, including the limelight hydrangea standard here on the end, out early summer last year because they were suffering. I actually lost the limelight hydrangea and had to purchase another one, it was that bad. Uh, I will speak about how I mended this bed in a separate video, so subscribe and follow along if you wanna find out what I did to remedy this clay soil situation. Um, but these is, since these are all first year, they are still relatively small, 
but I am very excited about how they're gonna look. Bogo hydrangeas, if you don't know what they look like, they're one of the most floriferous hydrangeas that are a dwarf variety, and they're just gonna be three or four foot tall, so it'll be a nice hedge around here of just continuous white blooms. Uh, we're back around here. We got the cat mint, cat's pajamas, both proven winners, which is absolutely gorgeous. And so this side of the bed basically mirrors the other side that I showed you. So I'm gonna turn my attention to this new bed that I created last year as well. I call this the avocado bed because it's kind of shaped like an avocado if you look from above it. And this is mostly filled with perennials and more hydrangeas and roses. So this is a uh, rose by the variety. Let's see. Tranquility. So it's a very beautiful white rose and I bought these uh, geraniums from Costco that were bare root and they are have a dark foliage and a beautiful uh, blue purpley flower. Have a variety of cat mint here that I don't remember. It's one of the first perennials I ever purchased for my garden uh, and I think it's probably one of the Walker's Low varieties or something like that. I moved it back here last year after I started this bed because I had it in the front under the magnolia and it did not love it. These are pinky winky hydrangeas, so I have a ring around this willow here. Um, there's a total of five of them. I know they will get quite large. I'm gonna try and keep them pruned. I may have to move them elsewhere on my property later. This willow has grown, probably doubled in size since I planted this bed last year. And although I know willows grow quickly, I wasn't expecting it to grow this quickly. So there are some perennials here that probably will like more sun and I'll need to move those out and replace those with shade perennials. These are Daisy May Daisies and Midnight Masquerade Pinstamen back here, which is absolutely gorgeous. As I mentioned, all of this was planted last year and you can see this Pinstamen is living its best life back here and it will have beautiful purple flowers on it here soon. This Iris, which I got from Costco, bloomed today and it is the most gorgeous shade of purple that I've probably ever seen. Um, you know, I've had hit and miss luck with bare root plants, but lately the things I've been getting, if I get them early enough in the season, get them in the ground, get them watered, they do quite well. So this is also Liatris that I got from Costco. I believe I got 60 total bulb bulbs when I bought it, and so they're everywhere. And I didn't trim them down into the spring, and so now I think I have Liatris coming up everywhere. Uh, we've got it backed by some uh, gara that I grew from seed, as I mentioned, on the south side of the house. Uh, I may be moving that to up around the mailbox. I've had lavender around the mailbox for the past two years, and each year I've had at least one of the plants die. Uh, I think they're, they're in above ground a little bit, and I think the winters have just been too much for them. It could also be that there's a sprinkler head right there nearby, and they were just getting more water than they wanted. So this area is a bit empty, but the plants that I had here that I also grew from seed are coming back. And this variety was a Gallardia, also called Blanket Flower. I think it was called um, some type of sunset, and it, has, it was covered with pollinators for most of the year last year. So it produces blooms continuously until frost. And so it's a very good variety. I'm not sure if I will move that around or what else I might plant in here, um, but we're gonna see how it comes along and then I might make up my mind later. This is a variety of daylilies. Some people have a love or hate relationship with daylilies. I absolutely love daylilies. Um, I wouldn't have an entire garden of daylilies, but I have some very special, unique varieties here that I will show you throughout the season as they bloom. The foliage is looking a little rough because they emerged early and then it's we had a drier spring and then the weather was warm and then cold and so uh, I'm hoping they start putting on blooms here soon but they're just some beautiful varieties. I may make a whole video on the daylilies I have in my garden if you're interested um, because they're just absolutely spectacular. A lot of doubles here, just big frilly huge blooms. They're all unique, so each clump is unique. Um, some varieties of daylilies in my garden I actually got from a man local here who is a breeder of daylilies. So some of them I don't have names of, 
but he bred um, on his farm, which I went to last year, which I'll show a picture below. This is one of them. I don't remember the bloom that comes on it specifically, but I'll show you later in the season. And it's just, it's just kind of very interesting to go see that man and his work and pick out daylilies for your garden. He actually shut it down recently and moved to a different state. So it was kind of sad. I went in the last season and picked out some things, but they'll live on in my garden. So this is a geranium that I grew from seed. And last year it was just a tiny mound and I'm not sure of the variety. I can probably find it and post it below, but it has absolutely become almost a shrub this year and it is just covered in blooms. Uh, these beautiful pink blooms. I was not expecting it to get this big quite honestly, but it's taken its uh, place here in the garden and it's quite beautiful. This is a Winecraft black smoke bush. Uh, it is growing super, super slow, much slower than I want it to, uh, but it may be one of those shrubs that I also have to move as this garden and the willow gets larger. I've got some peonies. I don't love peonies in the garden so much just because they're kind of a one hit wonder in the spring, but I planted a couple just to have the variety of plants out here. So they are about on the edge of bursting into bloom. Uh, back here in the back, you'll see a clump of plants there and back there. Those are hibiscus, hardy hibiscus, and they just started emerging from the ground. And they will be on the mission to bloom here in the next couple of months. So continuing around this way, I have the uh, Cat's Pajamas Cat Mint and a Limelight Hydrangea. This limelight is not doing excellent here. Um, I may switch it with another variety. I'm not sure if it's the actual hydrangea itself that's not good, doing good or the soil. Um, last year when we had that really bad freeze, it was brand new and I put it out here and it really, really took a toll on it. So there's a lot of dead growth in here. I need to come in and cut back, but I'm hoping it recovers. So I'm giving it a chance, a second chance. This is the rose that I mentioned was supposed to be Olivia Rose Austin uh, from David Austin, and it is not. It is Pegasus, which is a beautiful kind of apricot. I believe it's Pegasus. It's a beautiful apricot yellow rose that I'll show you later in the season. The only thing about it is it doesn't tend to ho hold the roses very well on the stem, so they tend to droop pretty bad. In this area, we have one of my favorite shrubs. I never got to my shrub of the year video and my shrub of the year was going to be uh, this shrub right here, which produces pink berries. It's a, called a proud berry coral berry by Proven Winners. The foliage is absolutely gorgeous, but in late summer, early fall, it starts producing pink berries that are great in uh, floral arrangements, which if you look at the image that is on my um, YouTube page, my profile picture. There are images, there are, there are proudberry coral, coral berries in that arrangement. So that concludes this bed. Over here, I just wanted to show this right here. So this year, these are the boxwoods that I mentioned that were significantly damaged. So they're all sorts of different sizes. I just cut all the dead off of them. You can see this one right here had quite a bit of dead growth and it's smaller than the others, but I'm gonna plant them around this uh, maple here. And then in the center, I believe I'm gonna do a bunch of different colored zinnias that I got from Florat Flower. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. So I got my dahlias planted, which I will show you in a different video uh, that will be up this week. It may be up before this video is, so depending on which one I get edited first. You may see this before or after. Um, if you're interested in dahlias, this is my second year growing dahlias. Last year I tried to grow them in the ground and did not have much success because of the clay soil I mentioned to you. So I'm growing them in this raised bed that I got from Vigo Garden. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. If you've never seen or heard of Vigo Garden, there is a link in my profile picture. You can get 5% off your purchase and free shipping. Um, and I'm growing uh, almost 30 different varieties of dahlias in here this year and I'm hoping this will just be a beautiful uh, just mirage of color here when I walk into the mini orchard. 
So I do have a espalier apple tree. I believe the variety is called Top Hat. It has three different apples on it, three different varieties of apples on each level. It needs desperately pruned, but considering I didn't get apples last year and I do have some apples that are coming on now, I don't want to prune it yet until I know where I'm getting apples and where I'm not. So that is a small apple tree, my single apple tree. I had another one that I had at the bottom at the end of this bed that did not make it and I cut it down earlier. I planted some in the ground tomatoes this year. I've never planted tomatoes in the ground out here, but last year I planted pumpkins and watermelon in this space and they did absolutely amazing. This entire black area was covered with pumpkins. Um, so they took over so much last year, it was a bit much. So I'm gonna try in-ground tomatoes because I do love tomatoes and that'll give me a good option of growing stuff that I can eat on and give to friends. And then I have a couple watermelons that I started from seed and holes in this black mat as well. This is a cherry tree, which looks like I'm also gonna be getting some cherries on. You can see a couple right there. We have a pear tree which is getting quite large. I actually bought this in the fall of 2019 and brought it home. We do have a couple pears that are showing up on here. Uh, once again, most of my fruit trees need pruned, but I am waiting until I know where the fruit's gonna be before I do that. My Egyptian walking onions are starting to bloom. And I mentioned about a giveaway for those. If you watch that video and comment, I may send you some Egyptian walking onions. I did plant, we've had more of them come up, but for those of you who are subscribers and commented on my Egyptian walking onion video, I am gonna wait. I've decided I'm gonna wait and send you uh, Egyptian walking onions after these bloom and harden off, just because I don't wanna send you something that may not germinate. Even though these are starting to come along, um, I'm just concerned that I would send you some that will not germinate considering I picked the best ones out to put in here myself. This is a peach tree that I've mentioned in a, another video that has peach leaf curl. I had peach leaf curl last year. I sprayed this with bonide copper fungicide um, late winter. I need to do more treatments throughout the winter. So peach leaf curl, to my knowledge, does not harm the tree. It's just pretty terrible looking and it just looks like it's just awful for the tree. But it still grows and produces fine. This tree has gotten quite large to be um, only put in when the others were in the fall of 2019, but it also needs to be pruned as well. I do have some peaches on here. I got no fruit last year because of our late, late freeze, but here, I don't know if you can see that little peach there. I've got peaches all over it. So thank you guys for joining me for my quick garden tour today. The video may be longer um, and not so quick, but there is, this is my first garden tour of stuff actually in bloom. I did do a winter garden tour with lots of pictures. If you want to see what the plants may look like in bloom, I will link that below because I have, um, I spent a lot of time on that video, including images of what the plants look like in bloom. So there's still a lot to do in the garden, but I'm really excited about this season, what this season's gonna bring to the garden. This is the third year I've had this garden. Um, so, everything is really gonna start coming into its prime. Nearly everything on the back side of the house is new this past year, the beds are anyway. So that stuff will be a little further behind than the front of the garden. But as I've coming to grow as a gardener, I've learned more things and I'm replacing plants and moving plants um, just to see how they work in my garden. So. It's kind of interesting, we live in Southwest Ohio and our little subdivision is kind of like a microclimate. It will rain just north of here, it will rain just south of here, sometimes we don't get any rain. Um, and our past two summers have been so dry that our ground has cracked. So I do have drip irrigation all throughout the garden. I'll be doing a video um, on drip ir irrigation. Somewhat, I'll be putting drip irrigation in my dahlia bed and my Egyptian walking onion bed, and that'll be kind of basics. Um, I do have an irrigation system, so my drip 
it hooks up directly to the irrigation system. Most of it does. So once again, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, comment below. If you have questions about any plant varieties or anything you see in the garden that looks interesting, shoot me a question or comment below and I will get those answered. Take care guys. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Bye.